You know, I haven't covered too much of the Nick Calandra stuff on this channel. Actually, I don't know if I've covered any of it, mainly because, uh, well, Hypnotic and Smash JT have had that unlock. But for those that don't know, Nick Calandra, a toady for Kotaku, who had his own company, Second Wind, uh... His life has become shambles with his employees quitting on him after he has started very public fights with Smash JT and others. And now it is just left in ruin to the point where he is getting exposed by his own previous company, his own previous partners. And now there's an entire video detailing every little thing that happened and I haven't seen it yet. But boy, do I want to. So we're going to get on with this together. My problems with Nick Calandra and why I believe he shouldn't work in games media. This is the anti-Gamergate movement completely turning on itself. All because of the toxicity that came from this one individual who refused to acknowledge the actual facts of the situation. And did everything he could for political and propaganda purposes. Just just, just sucking all the air out of the Melissa Mercante room. Oh, this is going to be glorious. Let's Go. This video is not meant for mass appeal. It is meant to inform the SWG community and the developers and games media members who supported us along the way. That would include the 18,000 or so Patreon members and the over 400,000 YouTube subs and anyone else who has ever associated with us as a group. I feel we owe a lot of our success to you and you are entitled to know how things went down. As such, this video will assume... I can already appreciate that. Look, look they're giving their support to, to, to their fans, their supporters. They're saying, we acknowledge you. We appreciate you. And that's more than uh, Nikki Boy or Listen Rikante and Kotaku have ever done. So already off to a good start. You are somewhat in the know of who we are and who I am. If you don't, well, what a strange way to meet. I promise my production value is not this non-existent normally. The intended outline of this video will start with the prefacing two hangups people might have. One being, if Nick is so bad, then why did everyone resign with him? Two, is this some kind of alt-right grift? Then I'm going to go into my problems with Nick and SWG leading up to my resignation, followed by what I found out about Nick after my resignation. The original video ended up much longer and convoluted than I expected, so I trimmed this one down to maintain more of the focus on Nick's behavior and separate SWG from his actions. There are more details and problems that went on at SWG, and that can be in its own video. Apologies if you don't like sequels. There are two details above all others that create a little cognitive dissonance, making it hard to believe negative criticism of Nick Calandra. If Nick is so bad, then why did the others resign in solidarity? That's not how it went down. It just looked better for the news. How it went down is I warned everyone we were going to be fired because the executives were tired of Nick overpromising, overspending, and underdelivering, and were offering me his job. He had driven up costs by over 70%. I didn't hear about that offering you his job part until he's already getting some new information. God damn. Okay, son, go off. And since the start of the year and lost somewhere around thirty to 60000 per month on YouTube site alone and getting worse. Only three people got to resign from the Escapist video team, myself and two others deemed profitable. Everyone else was fired. Yahtzee legally had to be the last to leave so we wouldn't trigger a solicitation clause or no poaching clause. He wasn't poaching, but we didn't want to take any chances with whatever might be in his 15-year-old contract. Speaking for myself, there were a few hang-ups, but I liked the rest of the team and Nick gave me a chance to get into the space to begin with, so I figured I could give him one as well. But now I've found out that even what I knew to be true at the time wasn't the full story. The rest of the team and I didn't know that Gamers was planning on sacking Nick and giving the rest of us creative freedom at The Escapist. Nick threw a fit, said The Escapist would never be profitable. Yes, there would be layoffs because Nick went on a hiring spree and his Prima project failed spectacularly. But the Out the gate, for those that don't know who Nick Landra is, he is very much one of those... I have to be right about everything all the time, sort of, uh, he's, he's like the destiny of modern day video game journalism, that's the best way to put it. The rest of us would get to do what we wanted with the channel. Essentially, Nick threw us under the bus due to his failure to deliver on what he promised. The second detail from the perspective of a vocal minority is that this is some kind of alt-right grift attack against Nick. No, Nick has slighted many people with all kinds of ideologies and political views. I, unlike Nick, am not really the type to give unsavory people on Twitter the time and attention, and trying to frame it as me standing with them is a distraction from the fact that the intent of this is to point out that Nick Calandra specifically is the worst type of person that can end up in games media. You know what? I can appreciate that. As you guys watching this know, if you are you know, dedicated to my type of content, uh, yes, I have a very particular political lean. That lean being that of an anarchist. However, quite frequently I'm called an alt-right Yahtzee and Nazi and all that stuff, and uh, yeah, no, that couldn't be further from the case. But the point is, I respect this type of individual who was able to keep them separate and be like, look, yeah, this guy's an idiot regardless of where you fall on the political aisle, so uh, let's just focus on him being stupid. I like that. 
He's been highly unethical, and the unfortunate effects of this is the validity of everything that's been published under his tenure will now come into question. I traced it as far back as August 2017 when Nick did not publicly disclose that one of the studios he was making a documentary for had offered a minimum $4,000 investment to get his fan-funded Kickstarter across the line. Since then, he's been trying to make bigger and bolder moves. They just don't pan out how you'd expect them to, I suppose. Claims to stand up for workers, developers, creatives, and consumers, essentially branding himself and the crew as the change the games industry desperately needs. You probably expect me to end this video by saying something like, it's social media, so none of this really matters anyway. People are going to play the game regardless because the vast majority don't care how something is made and just want to have fun. Well, alright, that's all true. But, what's also true is that we at Second Win and you, the person watching this right now, spend a lot of time thinking about online conversations like this, or otherwise you wouldn't be here. Yeah, but Nicky Boy didn't spend a lot of time thinking about online conversations. He spent a lot of time talking, thinking about how to have online arguments and how to make himself the bigger person, how to make himself the better person in the eyes of those watching without actually giving any sort of credence to other arguments that might actually be more valid than his, that might actually have some semblance of truth to them, because if it didn't align with his truth, it wasn't the truth. So, out, out the gate, we've got, you know, complete and utter... Uh, let's just say he's got a mask on for these videos. I don't know too much about Frost of Rivia, the guy who's actually making this one, uh, but I know enough to believe that, yeah, I, I already see things the same way as you because of what I do know about Nick Calandra outside of your experience with him. Maybe I'll end up having actual interesting discussions about things like AI, unions in the game industry, plagiarism, games media, oh, and my personal favorite, out-of-touch executives. His actions, however, have been anything but noble. During my short time at the Escapist Inn at SWG, he attempted to steer content in a direction that validated his views and minimized criticism of his biases and underhandedly tried to micromanage every creative decision. He isolated, overworked, verbally attacked, and... So you mean the thing that many of us have been accusing him of for literal months now turned out to be 100% true? I am shocked! Shocked! Well, not that shocked manipulated his co-workers. He blackballed developers and asked for game coverage one too many times for his liking, even though he set himself as the direct point of contact for the group and was actively against the idea of us giving free shoutouts or small deals to smaller devs who couldn't afford it. He would then try to funnel them back his way to bargain for paid consultations. All the while, he misrepresented audience feedback to exert his vision on the channel and misled the team and community about the cost of running a business in order to appeal to their sympathy and draw out more money from them. And all of this is so he can finally fulfill his creative vision, and when pressed on why he is paid as much as he is, he responds, I've gotten accustomed to a certain lifestyle, and I have a mortgage to pay. Bro, what a douche thing to say. Look, here's the deal, y'all. If you go ahead, you go out there, you're starting your own business, you best be prepared to take some cuts. Yeah, you might be accustomed to a certain lifestyle. That lifestyle is going to have to take a back seat. You're going to have to change that accustomization. And that's not even really a word, but you get my point. Because you need to put the business first. You need to put the success of the business first. And if you're going to put that on the line because, oh, you want your, you know, fancy sort of a nice way of living, then you are not cut out to be a leader in any sort of business sense to begin with. That is, honestly, that is the worst thing that's been said so far, in my opinion, just from a leadership standpoint. My God, that is uh, uh, incredible. In six months, his business decisions, content strategy, and community management raised our costs, just our cost, from somewhere around 600000 to a forecasted ballooning 1 million cost operation, and eroded our goodwill and income, which he leveraged to make more decisions. For clarification, I don't believe Nick intentionally tanked SWG's value. From what I could find and from my experience, Nick doesn't set out with the intent to fail. He's, he's about to say he didn't He didn't do he didn't ruin us intentionally. He's just that fucking incompetent. <laughs> and is stubborn about using the same failed plan he's been using for the past six years. You can see on screen what is essentially Calandra's thumbprint across Gameumentary, The Escapist, Prima, and now Second Win. He's been made aware by others and myself that what he does doesn't work. It's the whole reason everyone was fired to begin with. He refuses to change his ways and actively sabotages anyone who tries to help him or notify the rest of the team. And while I do hold Nick 99% accountable for SWG's problems, the structure within SWG was unstable from the start and falling apart, and most of the times I butted heads was when I tried to slow things down to reevaluate our cost and stop the overspending instead of pushing more people to the Patreon and milking the community we already had to capitalize on the momentum. This is a... <laughs> All right, now, I get there's going to be inherent bias here. So far, he has said, Nick is an idiot. I've been the good guy who is trying to slow things down and course correct us. Um, 
I, of course, have a bias against Nick as well, given the ga uh, Gamergate situation, given the Alyssa Mercante stuff, given his actions towards my buddy Smash JT. So, I, I, I do want to go ahead and just take a moment to realign myself and be like, alright, homie here is building himself up to be, you know, the, 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 the reasonable and the one that we should take the side of. And maybe that's true, uh, but oftentimes the truth is somewhere in the middle, so I, I just wanted to throw that out there team of talented creatives who just wanted to make things they didn't have the desire to get as involved with nick's power grabs and of the leads that routinely took charge none of them were qualified to make business decisions or content strategy swg didn't choose nick to lead it's just no one else wanted it even i didn't want a lead role myself and three others are qualified to help but saying so made us seem argumentative defensive and arrogant the specific event that finally made me see there was no chance for change was when i asked one lead if they were afraid yahtzee would leave if they kicked nick out and this lead said swg would be fine without yahtzee the group would get to keep his salary, the money in the war chest, and that would buy them enough time to find their way again. This lead in particular encouraged an every man for themselves mindset from early on that led to strong arming within the group. This was essentially the same conversation I had with the executives of gamers back at the... So basically what you're saying is there was no sense of a team. If you're going to be building an industry like this, especially nowadays when... Uh, let's be real. A single YouTuber can do more than your entire team. Is like, like this, the second win gaming model is outdated. It's just G4, but on YouTube. Let's let's call it what it is. Uh, people, the solo operations that are basement can have more subscribers, get more video content out there, can have higher quality stuff if they're good at what they do. So if you really want this to work, then you need to be a team. You need to be a family. You need to have a core foundation. And it sounds like they didn't have that from the beginning. And I'm wondering if they didn't have that because, again, Nick, as the quote-unquote leader, doesn't have any sort of leadership quality, so he's not you know, imposed the concept of the Yakima. He's not imposed the One Piece going Mary Straw Hat crew of we are all in this together which is what needs to be done if you're going to go on some sort of endeavor like this which already has a high chance of failure i'm frankly i'm i'm impressed i really am I mean, again I'm impressed with the sheer stupidity escapist that convinced me to leave then as well i don't believe someone like that who can't perceive value is the kind of person that should be appointing themselves as hr evaluating people's worth in the company firing people and then issuing statements about how the problems are just the usual growing pains for my part, I believe this had to be public facing because I exhausted every other avenue and I believe Nick Calandra's standards of conduct and how he drives SWG go against everything we claim to stand for as a business. We're supposed to stand up for consumers, creatives, developers, workers, especially now when the industry looks so bleak. As far as I'm concerned, I believe Nick Calandra goes- And why does the industry look bleak? I, I, I see, this is where he and I are probably going to disagree. Why does the industry look bleak? The industry looks bleak because of people definitely like Nick Calandra. Maybe like you as well. I don't know. I don't want to say anything negative about you because I don't know enough about you. However, the industry is bleak because of people like Nick who cannot, and I repeat, cannot get the social justice dick out their mouths and just say, hey, let's go ahead and have video games that appeal to the masses, that don't have anything to do with political ideas. Hey, this Gamergate movement that 500,000 people almost have signed an SBI detective page that Kravrutus made on Steam, maybe if 500,000 people decide to join that, they might be onto something. There might be some literal grievances, and that's just people who have access to Steam. Maybe this is an even larger movement. Maybe this is a larger contingent of customers. Maybe these just aren't absolute nobodies in a fringe minority group. No, maybe there's a concerted effort of individuals who actually want gaming to be great again, and people like you, Nick, are actively sabotaging it and trying to minimize it because all you give a fuck about is ideology above anything and everything else and you're using games as a mask for that because games are the largest industry the largest entertainment industry in the fucking world that would be my assertion goes against the ideals he claims to uphold misleads public perception and actively profits from it as part owner employee at the time and someone with a history of calling out these practices alongside nick himself i believe the right thing to do was to resign and inform the public I did not leave because SWG refused to fire Nick. When I was asked if I'd leave if Nick stayed, I said I would continue to work in SWG to the best of my duties. The problems continued after that. I did not leave because the head of sales was fired. I barely knew them, as we had both been kept in isolation and Nick fed me lies blaming the head of sales for our problems. My resignation was written before they were fired on August 1st. Feel free to check whoever steps forward as the public representative for SWG as details are kept vague. But now everything else I've found after my resignation that I'm about to get into is pointed solely at Nick Calandra. It takes a while. Oh, here's where we're about to get into the good stuff. Look how long this one chapter is. Just, oh, there's, yeah, this is, this is, we, we, we in for the long haul now, baby. Let's go. Any claim Nick might have of being unaware and unable to control himself 
It also recontextualizes our history and fills in the gaps for a lot of questions I had. After I resigned, his former co-workers and bosses reached out to me with allegations of experiencing the same behavior and worse throughout the past six years. So apparently this is one of those bosses he's referring to. Actually, quick tip, be mindful of Calandra potentially stalking your socials. He did that to me for close to a year. Anytime I said anything relating to Games Press work until I finally blocked him. Hopefully that doesn't happen to you as well. But yeah, it was super weird. Woo, it's some beta cut behavior. And multiple outlets he's worked at. I made sure to find as many sources as I could to back up each claim as well as do my due diligence to try and refute it. I've verified the credibility of each piece of evidence and each individual. And I've also gone the lengths to vet some of the people Nick himself pointed me towards. He was once again lying and trying to delegitimize people and their claims. I will show what I can, but a lot of sources were given in confidence due to fear of retaliation from Nick or any consequences that may come from speaking out in the industry. Here's what I found on top of the stuff I... What sort of consequences? What what power does Nick have? N Nick is nothing in the grand scheme of things. Nick isn't a large multi-million dollar conglomeration or anything to that effect. I mean, we've already seen your finances are basically in the toilet. Why would people be afraid of speaking out about this asshole? What does he have on these sorts of individuals? I'm genuinely curious. I personally experienced already. In a few words, Nick Calandra has a history of highly unethical behavior in games media and just in general including everything else I've mentioned so far, plus taking equipment and product meant for press and publications under the guise of coverage and keeping it for personal use. Based on evidence found, Nick seems to have been using his own personal Steam account as the main Steam account for each of his publications he's worked at for over the past 10 years, allowing hundreds of press codes for games to be funneled directly into his personal Steam account rather than that of any individual publication. They follow... Bro, that's nasty. He's over here like, oh yeah, no, send our company the review copy and it's just his own fucking personal Steam. That's, oh... Bro, that's dirty. And where he goes. Now back to the rest of the stuff. Offsetting his costs with income from other sources to mislead associates. Consistent overpromising, underspending and underdelivering that put other people's jobs on the line when layoffs come through. Pushing for content that validated his own views and tastes while discouraging any content that took a stance against his own biases. Prioritizing his own... That was... Okay, so, so hold on. Let's, let's go back a frame. Uh... His own views and tastes while discouraging any content that took a stance... Colte, let game journalists cook. Like, yeah, yeah, this this was the video that, uh, I, I, I've seen this video, it's mind-numbing, I absolutely loathe it. it was, uh, it's basically just a, a masturbatory session, it is a jerk-off session, it's a circle jerk for game journalists. Again, there's there's a reason why I say that he is a toady of Kotaku, because, I mean, he, he, he objectively was, uh, and this is the video that I think everybody needs to see to know how the true inside of the, they don't realize how much they're giving away with this bullshit video, but yeah, it's, mm, let's, let's keep going. It's against his own biases, prioritizing his own raises and money for his projects while holding back the upwards mobility of his co-workers and also prioritizing his publicity to the detriment of others, cyberstalking his peers in the field to the point of making them uncomfortable, slandering, libeling, blackballing, and threatening to mobilize his audience against people in the games industry with the explicit intent to harm their careers. I wonder who he's talking about right there, because that seems pretty damn exact sees to what happened with Smash JT. And what would be the bitch the bunch here is if homie isn't talking about Smash JT, that would mean Nick has done this to multiple people. I wouldn't be surprised about that one either. Creating hostility in the work environment by lying, manipulating, gaslighting, and isolating people who disagree with him or are shown to be more capable than him. Trading positive press, positive reviews, and documentary opportunities without disclosing that publishers were paying for his trips, paying for the documentaries, and Nick was bargaining for future employment. This isn't stuff that happened only six years ago. This was happening while we were at SWG and Escapist and every other outlet he worked at for the past six years. Now this part is going to sound personal, but it's relevant and sets up the next points. A lot of Nick's behavior comes from a sense of entitlement, feeling like he is owed stuff. But a lot of Nick's behavior also comes from resentment. He feels wronged by people in games media and Nick holds grudges. The issue is that Nick also has a problem with perception. It creates this catch-22 where if Nick wrongs you and you stand up for yourself, then he feels he can retaliate. But if Nick wrongs you and you don't do anything, then he thinks you're holding it in and plotting your revenge, which angers him so he feels he can strike first. And anything... I mean, these are 100%... Yeah, these coincide. I've known people that act like this. They, uh... It's, it, it, this is just clear narcissistic behavior. ...can set him off. Important example here. For as long as I've known Nick, he hated this one specific individual with a passion, and what drove him up the walls was the way this person pretended to not know Nick. I reached out to this guy, and lo and behold, he actually didn't know who Nick was. You can check Twitter if Nick leaves this up by the time this goes through, and see that he has never acknowledged Nick once, but Nick has tweeted if Nick hold leaves on, this up on. by the time this goes through, and see that he has never acknowledged Nick once. 
I don't remember how he behaved in the past because the dude has never caught my attention before other than that uh, when he got duped by Grums. Oh, I think this is when they're talking about Smash. Once, but Nick has tweeted at him. I went and double-checked with somebody else to make sure... Someone else had thanked this guy for standing up to Nick, but this guy maintained he didn't know but This Nick. guy really didn't know Nick, and he has given the exact same responses. He generally didn't know Nick. Nick's arch nemesis wasn't pretending to... Yeah, oh, they're ta they talking about my boy! They talking about Smash! I knew you couldn't do a video like this without him coming up. Oh, baby, let's go! Not know him. He didn't know he even existed. And Nick was holding a one-sided grudge this entire time. This set off some red flags, so I reached out to a few more people I knew Nick had problems with and found out that they also didn't know Nick or knew of Nick, but didn't know Nick was beefing with them. He also tried to delegitimize the head of sales with a message that appeared to be from a disgruntled employee of his prior to joining SWG, but that did not check out. I had enough on Nick already to know he was well aware of his actions and now being insincere. When I told him I was going to continue investigating the claims that popped up and allow him the chance to explain himself, his demeanor completely changed back to the Nick I knew, accusing me of acting out of malice with the sole intent of running him out of games media. I do feel Nick was willing to say anything I was willing to hear at the time to try and prevent me from going through with it. The moderator agreed that truth should come forward. Nick panicked and named people he believed had it in for him from his days at Gamumentary, saying they forced him into a meeting to assert ownership under false pretenses and that he offered them jobs when he sold the brand. And they turned him down. If you run that, then I will do what I need to do. Well, um, sure. See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, like they pulled me into a meeting on false pretenses under the four of them, where they tried to uh, basically assert their ownership on Gamey despite not having paid any of the taxes, despite not having paid any of the business expenses. It, it, there's some contract they sent you. I don't remember what I signed on that, but that that whole thing that whole thing ended ugly but that was not like i did not screw them out of money in any form no he's a real shifty looking dude too i mean look him in the eyes he got those fucking trailer park boy eyes behind those glasses i'm just saying on that i tried to get them full-time jobs they didn't want it kyle bailey jake theriel uh, that was a lie at the time as i have the written document of the intervention that was held as well as the audio recording of the meeting in which they gave nick plenty of warning and asked him if he wanted to continue Nick used to run a site called Only SP. It did okay, and then it didn't, so he sold it. He then tried again with Gameumentary. It was run on the hard work of volunteers, and at times staff members pitched in to cover costs. Needing funds, Nick launched a Kickstarter for $22,000. They made it, but only because Nick accepted a $4,000 investment from Outpost Games. Seems he has a history of cashing in on a community's goodwill, and also a history of unethically blending the lines between PR and journalism. He was trying to get into the PR business and has a journalism degree, so surely he knew the difference between PR and journalism and the ethics surrounding the two. Ever since then, Nick's been trading good... Ah, uh, see, I, yes, I bet he does know the ethics difference between the two. However, I doubt he cares. Most individuals in that line of work don't care because it's all about whatever they have to do to get to the next level. In fact, knowing ethics is really knowing anything more than how to skirt them and make yourself still look good while doing so, which Nick is apparently a master at because how many companies has he ruined it now? If I'm correct, it's four? Press coverage and even reviews for favors, gifts, trips, and job opportunities. One such opportunity was when he sold Gameumentary to Enthusiast Gaming in exchange for documentaries and a salaried job opportunity for himself and no one else on the staff. The sale was propped up on his staff's hard work and Nick used it to leverage a job for himself at Enthusiast Gaming. A group of four had a meeting with Nick to air out their grievances and work out their demands. They told him what the meeting was about and he agreed to stay. I will be... Homie built his company off the backs of people that he was already effectively stealing from and then was going to leave them high and fucking dry for a different job after selling shit out from under uh, underneath them? Is that what I'm picking up? Is that what they're putting down? Because what the... Look, I knew this dude was a, uh, a piece of shit in terms of just the culture war stuff, but holy fuck, he's a straight-up scumbag if this is true. Like, like just beyond the ideological, oh, woke versus anti-woke Gamergate stuff, dude is just an actual monster. You're asking him... I think I decided um, I'm going to, I'll read the thing that, um, with maybe a little bit of embellishment, probably not that much. Uh, and I, I'm not sure, sh should I, should I like ask after I finish that little paragraph? Like, like, is this okay? Like, are you yeah, willing to listen? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Oh, okay. And then we can uh, continue on down. And then once we once we get past the, the the issues and stuff, before we get to the demands, I just want to hear what he has to say. Yeah, I agree. 
if, if anything. Um, sorry if it seems like intervention-y. It doesn't, we don't mean for it to feel that way. We just wanted to basically have a meeting and, and talk about stuff. Um, are you down to listen? Mm -hmm. The grievances were sale of site without consulting staff and no transparency on the details of the deal. No clarity of vision with site or YouTube channel. Extreme amount of micromanaging. Complete control of the shoots, but he didn't have the knowledge or experience to perform the task correctly. Lack of transparency overall and making major decisions without discussing fully with executives. Disregard for the roles. Decisions or agreements reached in an executive or staff meetings are often disregarded or ignored soon after. Lack of respect of site members. The demands he agreed to, legally binding contracts concerning documentary rights, full transparency of the budget, clarification of roles, streamlined creative workflow, better organization surrounding docs, PR support for all content. But Nick would not, under any circumstances, agree to communicating business decisions with the team. Even if it wouldn't change anything about the decision, he chose to keep the team in the dark. According to him, they had no financial stake in the company whatsoever, even though he repeatedly promised pay, and it was the work of the volunteers that boosted Gamey value to make a sale in the first place. Each one resigned during that meeting, and in the end, he didn't tell them how much the site was purchased for. Like, I'm completely aware. I'm not saying you don't have a stake in the site. You've worked on the documentaries and all that, and I totally plan to compensate you guys for that. But those are not, the, the financial dealings of the site are mine and mine alone. I think that's what we disagree with. It, you can't, like, I... You goddamn right you disagree with that. Holy shit, what a vulture, bro! I, like, literally, my name is on the, the domain name. I pay they, the bills. That's, that's fine. We're not I saying that the necessarily. I pay the taxes on the site. It's that for I morale to all the improve across the team, the that cannot go forward. In order for us to feel like a team and not peasants in the kingdom, that process has to change. The financial, um, that's not, the business dealings of the site, the financials of the site are with me. I think I think it's time for us to kind of come to a point in a way. I, I'm going to speak for myself here. There were things that I was hoping to get out of this meeting in terms of changes, agreed upon changes that we kind of went through, et cetera. And Nick, the truth is I don't feel like there is enough change coming from you in terms of actually wanting to make the site better and own up to mistakes that have been made by you or by others or by all of us. And quite frankly, at this point, I'm out. I'm out of the website. I don't want to be part of this anymore if my effort – and my work for more than a year, more than 30 plus pieces of content is not going to be appreciated. And serious, that there's not going to be any me? changes going forward. I ran only. Why, why is Nick acting like, oh, are you serious, dude? This dude just said he's worked on 30 different pieces of content and apparently you ain't paid, homie? Holy shit, I feel dirty just hearing this. Like, I owe motherfuckers some money. Like, goddamn. Only SP for four years and people did a hell of a lot more work for me than you've done. Okay, and let's um, stop and insulting people. Um, yep. One last question, um, just kind of a shot in the dark here. How much is Enthusiast paying for Game Humanity in the site as a whole? I'm not telling you that. Okay. But after talking to Nick's former co-workers from various outlets, I continued to find threads and trends that led back to his Game Humanity days. Even the little things became big things. Example, Nick drew heavy criticism back when he made the Kingdom Come Deliverance documentary. The head of the company was a gamer gator and shared alt-right views. Nick approached this controversy purely from Warhorse Studios' angle without critically examining the director's stances, which some viewers thought was a bad call, causing Nick to argue with them. This felt inconsistent with Nick because I know he believes in asking the hard questions, having before ambushed people he was interviewing with uncomfortable questions the interviewee asked to be withheld beforehand. Nick trades good press coverage and holds back criticism in exchange for paid documentaries, trips, gear, and job opportunities, and a lot of his connections stem from his game entry days. His staff at the time was not pleased when they found out. This recontextualized one of Nick's patterns of behavior. A lot of Nick's personal tastes and biases that he pushed on his staff for coverage or restricted them from criticizing led back to his PR connections. He was making deals behind the scenes without them knowing. I even found one where he threw in a positive review to sweeten the deal. All for flights, gifts, job favors, documentary opportunities, none disclosed. That made us look at his odd social media addiction in a different light. I also thought Nick flew off the handle, but something was off. Nick had already been made aware of his problem and vowed to be better back when he was tricked into publishing false evidence. He behaved himself, sort of, and was a bit more vague. And that, and that was uh, the whole trick into publishing false evidence, for those of you guys that don't know. That was uh, during the most recent Gamergate scandal. Uh, yeah, G G Grums and uh, some of Cabrus, um, Cabrus guys... Yeah, they, they got they got Nicky Boy on some incorrect info, and basically he published an entirely inaccurate story because he fell for some fake leaks. It was uh, pretty incredible. Defensive, 
Then he went on the attack almost out of nowhere until he embarrassed himself on a podcast, which I warned him about. He claims he stopped because he was threatened with termination, but that came after the fact that his apparent Lady Fair had sided with his arch nemesis, who once again pretended to not know that Nick existed. Keep in mind that Nick has a history of making relationships up and trying to be a knight in shining armor, so I wouldn't trust Nick's word that someone else motivated him. But now I know he had Twitter Blue during that time and was hiding it. If you don't know, Twitter Blue lets you get money from engagements. I remember that Nick found out how much money could be made from Twitter Blue on June 11. You can hide the blue check mark, but you can also tell someone has Twitter blue because that's the only way to make posts that are longer than the 280 character limit. Nick was making m- So wait, homie who is all anti-Elon Musk and against the, you know, you know, oh, making money and uh, you know, using alt-right platforms, paid for Twitter blue, hit it, made money on Twitter on the side, and still want to add like he was one of the downtrodden one of you guys who's so abused by the system- Bro, I'm I'm so impressed by the commitment to sheer douchebaggery. Holy shit, I'm gonna come. Money during his culture warring. All that outrage amounted to about 2 million engagements for a whopping $10. Twitter <laughs> Blue cost $8 at base, so he tanked our reputation and made it harder to find sponsors for two Twitter dollars. Makes you wonder if it's less embarrassing to admit to having a social media problem that draws in sympathy. Not saying he was tanking SWG's value and planning to sell it, I'm just noting that Nick has sold only SP, Gamumentary, and in his mind he facilitated the sale of Escapist. What incentive does this man have to not run a business into the ground when he knows he can just sell it off after the fact? Nick went on to Escapist magazine and somehow ended up as editor-in-chief. Talking to workers that were there before my time, Nick isolated a few of the content creators and lorded over them with his heavy-handed content direction. Say you wanted to cover your favorite game, well, Nick wouldn't greenlight or promote it until you covered one of his favorite games first, or one of his undisclosed connections. I can't state the games because it might reveal the creators, but he was getting bolder with the unethical quid pro quo. More documentary opportunities as well as gaming gear were coming up for Calandra. But Nick couldn't keep the video side in the green, so he used money from the editorial side to offset the losses, a major red flag that led to the parent company splitting the video side away from the rest of the site. Nick was on his own now, not doing well, and then gamers bought up Escapist Magazine. This was around the time I showed up. I didn't see many red flags with Nick at the time, but man, did I have a bad time under gamers. He led me to believe it was his corporate bosses. He dangled a full-time contract over me for months and ignored his boss's attempts to promote me. He had me voice 60 videos for his Prima project where we assembly line Lords of the Fallen guides to no success. He had me voice his Stratos videos and shorts. He wanted me to come up with yet another series and- You know what? I will say that's one good decision that Nick Calandra has made. Having you voice the videos, because let me tell you, homie, you got a good voice for this shit. Nick's voice is nails on a shop board, yours is silky smooth melted white butter. White chocolate. Dark chocolate? I don't really fucking care. Either way, you sound good. In another series, all of this on top of my other duties. I was in big time crunch mode and Nick was practically begging me to get him through the year because his bosses set unreal expectations. Turns out that was a lie. Nick was the one who promised them $805,000 in 2024 from YouTube video side alone while we were losing 30 to 60k quarterly. Nick was all over the place and received numerous complaints of creating a hostile work environment. He demanded the contracts be rewritten so that everyone answered to him, and it created this strange back and forth where Nick and his boss were fighting over me until the CEO pulled me into a meeting. I didn't know who to believe at the time. Nick said everything was their fault. Gamers said it was Nick's fault. They finally gave me access to the analytics, though, and I was happy to see that Nick or whoever set up the YouTube backend wasn't very good at it. (laughs) Once we optimized it a little, we could get more value per video and make the climb less daunting. But it did show me only Yahtzee and I were profitable. This is what led the executives to finally try and cut Nick clean off. He had run out of excuses for why he couldn't grow a video series in a channel. He took their money and it was time to pay it back, but he wanted to play victim instead. Their plan was for a Nicholas Escapist, one where the creators got to experiment and do what they wanted with the channel. He angrily declared the Escapist would never be profitable and that set his boss off. But we didn't know that. The team wasn't going to be fired until Nick threw a temper tantrum. He would rather an outlet go up in flames with him in it than have it succeed without him. And that's how we ended up leaving, unaware that Nick was the cause of all of our problems. Before we worked at SWG, though, I demanded to know whether he held me back from a promotion or if it was corporate. I wouldn't be mad, and I was fine with it if he used it to bargain for the full-time pay of the other staff members. He held firm that it wasn't him, and he'd go on to overspend, overpromise, overwork, underdeliver, and create a hostile workplace just as he had a gameumentary and escapist, while continuing to do back-alley deals with his PR connections where he traded positive coverage and dulled criticism in exchange for favors, job opportunities, and paid documentaries. That's as far as this one's going to go because all the remaining details expand on my problem with Nick plus SWG leading up to my resignation, and I felt it watered down the core focus of Nick's actions. If there are any questions pertaining to Nick, feel free to ask them in the comments or on Twitter as I plan to do a live stream in a few days where I can answer any frequently asked questions. If you have anything to ask about SWG, feel free to ask those as well so I can better structure that video. 
You may have noticed this video is monetized, so there could be claim of my milking the drama for money. Those claims will come up no matter what I do. There's always a purity test. And the undeniable truth is that yes, speak. You know what? Motherfucker milk this for money. You have absolutely earned it. Holy shit. Man, make this montage. Homie, I'm dropping you the like. I'm going to leave a comment. I'm going to subscribe because you have earned this. That's right. Uh, make your penny. Apparently, there was a long period of time where you didn't get paid from all the work you did for Nicky Boy. Fucking make that bag back here, bro. Speaking out against people like Nick has the side effect of bringing attention and money. I believe in the end it's about your main goal, how you get there, and what you do with the money that matters. I'd like to give back to the people that trusted SWG and me, and raise up developers, writers, games media, content creators, and to make something like that happen, I can't be shy about money. I also plan to stay independent regardless of the outcomes because I don't want to be in a position again where I can't speak out. What happens now? Personally, I do the same as I've done before. As for Nick's resignation, that vote with my wallet, my time, and my support. As for you, you've been informed. You can ask more questions to me, to SWG, and in the end, you are going to have to make your own decision. This isn't me versus SWG, this is me against Nick Calandra's unethical behavior, and I'd ask him to separate from the team so that his actions don't continue to paint them in a bad light. Well, that was informative. Again, I knew Nick Calandra was a POS, but mainly because of our... Uh, let's just say our friction being on opposite sides of the culture war, opposite sides of Gamergate, the uh, the Alyssa Mercante stuff going down, and of course his interactions with Smash JT. Uh, I had no idea, though, that things went that deep, that dark, th over that long a period of time as well. Bro, um, I, I, I just want to say, Nick is cooked. Like, like n not, not only cooked, Nick, like... Left in the fucking oven, broiler on, and then you went out to the fucking movies. You came back and your house is burned down, cuts. It's there ain't nothing left. There is no way he's gonna recover from this, assuming this story actually does take off. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'm really gonna wrap it here. I don't have much else to add. I, I hope you learned as much as I did because now you know. Now you know how these anti Gamergate guys are. Now you know how those that are siding with Kotaku and siding with Alyssa Mercante and claiming to be, you know, oh, male feminists and wanting to see games, video games made, made for everyone when they're running with nothing but their ideology. They are all, they, they, everything, those. Those that uh, preach the loudest had the most to hide. Clearly, Nick had so much to hide. That's without there even being a part two. This was bonkers. Make sure you go support this individual, whether it be, again, dropping him a like, a sub, whatnot. Uh, I, I, I want to see where this goes from here. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Or let me know on X where you can find me at Bolt the Word. And please do subscribe. I'm a nerdy news channel. I cover nerdy news every day. Way longer than my typical videos and reactions. But uh, we definitely had to check this out. So by all means, also check me out on Instagram at Words of Paradise underscore Leon. And become a member for $4.99 a month. You can join the Discord. Choose the articles I go over on a day-to-day -day basis. Choose the videos I react to on my Friday night live streams. And of course, get involved with over 80 other vital idols. We are a bright, beautiful, glowing, vibrant community that I cannot wait to grow even further because we do care about diversity. The only one kind of diversity, diversity of thought. So if that's interesting to you, join the Discord, hit subscribe, and until next time, it is all here in the Nerdosphere. This has been Words of Paradise.